Willkommen, bienvenue, and welcome back to Crash Landing with Light. I was just sitting here waiting for my dirt to finish sifting, and look what I found! A soybean seed! That's going to solve all sorts of food problems. Why? Because, well, soy is the vegan wonder food. You can take this soybean and press it in the presser. It's not going to tell you how to do that here, but when you do, you get silken tofu and soy milk. If you put the silken tofu back in, you get firm tofu, which, if you look at these or dictionary names, names, it counts as cooked beef, raw beef, cooked chicken, raw chicken, egg, cooked fish, raw fish, cooked meat, raw meat, cooked mutton, raw mutton, cooked pork, and raw pork. It is every meat. So you can just take these beans, bone meal the bejesus out of them, and get whatever meat you want. The silken tofu is basically cream, so you can make ice cream out of it. And the soy milk, do, 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 not coconut milk, not regular milk, soy milk counts as milk. So if we look at the various recipes, hmm, that's weird. Hmm. It's not showing me that soy milk can be used for it, but pretty much anything that uses milk can use soy milk. I'm gonna have to check on my NEI options to see why that was being weird. Yeah, recipe mode. Show me the soy milk. Nope, no, back. Oops. Okay, one last time. Let's try to get some recipes for that soy milk showing. No, nope, it's not gonna show me. Well, you'll just have to take my word for it that you can use soy milk for all sorts of things that would use milk, particularly those cakes, which Oddly enough, um, are part of these speed upgrades for the machines, but they also take potions, so we're going to have to kill a blaze to get all the uh, brewing type situations up and running. Ender cake. Interesting. Um, <laughs> Stay on target. So, yes, we may or may not do that next episode. We'll see how things go. Um, I just had an idea. Do, do, do. Ah, there we are. So, soy milk can make cakes, but it can also make heavy cream and cheese. Cheese is really important. goes on all sorts of things. Ice cream, chocolate, all sorts of things. Anything that would take milk, spice bun, can use soy milk. So now that we've got the soybeans, we can do all those fancy, fancy things. But the reason you're probably here is for the lossless pressure chamber. So let's go build one. Um, when I had it over there, I had some trouble when I was trying to put lots of things into my pressure chamber. It, They would get stuck in the interface. And that's, that's just no good. So what we're going to do is come over here. And we're going to build the base as per usual. I don't know why I was jumping there. Now, this is just a regular pressure chamber. We're going to need a way to get things into our pressure chamber. And those things are in here. Good old Steve's factory manager. So, we're going to take our inventory manager and put it right here. We're going to take a redstone receiver because there's going to be two modes for this lossless pressure chamber. We'll cover those when we get to them. And then the item valve. This is the key component. It has to face into the pressure chamber pointing towards the air block. Now from here 
we just build the rest of the chamber as per usual with windows where we want windows the valve I'm gonna put on the top do always leave the air block because there has to be somewhere for the stuff to go Now the beautiful thing about this pressure chamber that I'm going to be building is that you only have to fill it once. It will never lose pressure after that. So what we're going to do is place a closed circuit of pipes here, hop down, and place our air compressor not on the ground um, it doesn't matter because it's not gonna stay you're just gonna put it there to prime the pump per se um, and what we need is some fuel for which to prime it so let's take a block of coal let's break it back up and start cooking because um, anything else that needs to happen doesn't necessarily need to happen uh, before that's in place. So we've got our Steve's factory thing here. We need an output chest and an input chest. So we'll put one here and one there. Remember, they have to touch the manager or an inventory cable. Uh, oddly enough, we don't need any inventory cables this time. This is the entire machine except for a lever. Because if you're going to have redstone reception, you might as well have a lever on it. Uh, let's have it facing this way. Uh, once everything's set up, we might put an aphorism tile or a sign saying this way one mode, that way the other. So first, uh, we want to check our coordinates. So x of 190 because in here it's going to be difficult to tell the chests apart so we're going to have a trigger that just happens on the regular interval all it does is happen you are going to grab things from the input chest and which one did i say 190 not 191 So input chest, target, doesn't matter, items, anything that happens to go in there. We don't care what we put in the chest, we're going to compress it all. And then the output, we're going to send it to the item gate, or the item valve. Target, again, doesn't matter, items, blacklist, chuck everything into the pressure chamber. We're going to want to keep an eye on this. We don't want it to overfill. We want it to be past four, but not past five. OK, so this is going to be the compress it program. And that's it. That Just take the stuff, throw it in. Then we're going to have the ejection method. Now this we're going to move over because there are two possibilities, depending on how the lever is thrown. So we've got our receiver. The sides, it doesn't really matter, doesn't really matter. Just need it to check whether or not it's being powered. On one side, we're going to pull things from the item valve. And on the other side, we are also going to pull things from the item valve. The question is, which things? So at this point, we're actually going to rename these inputs such that we can keep track of them. So we're going to call this one primary items. Uh, that name is too long. 
So we're just going to call this one primary. I'm going to call this other one, you guessed it, secondary. The primary items are going to be the things that have never been compressed before. That you put something in and this is the first time it's being compressed. So for example, compressed iron blocks, compressed iron ingots, uh, plastic. The beautiful thing about plastic in this program is that you can change the detection to fuzzy and it'll take any plastic. Ooh, nighttime spiders might be coming for us. So you set it to fuzzy, it'll find any type of plastic, green, black, blue, yellow, any sort of plastic, it'll grab it. Um, yes, I probably should have encased that area before now, but I didn't really have the time. Or the energy, or the iron. Ooh, sleep. Oh, we need to watch our hunger, too. Okay, so that's the primary items. The secondary items will be the things that um, contain something compressed in their recipe. So the etching acid bucket and the empty PCBs require the green plastic, which has already been compressed. Oh, hello. You could stay as long as you like. Um, okay, that spider has gone away. Good. So we got our primary items. Um, iron, plastic, anything else that you put in and it's the first time it's been compressed. The secondary We've got the etching acid bucket. We've got empty PCBs. Uh, let's fuzzy that one just in case. Um, also, the transistors and capacitors. need to go in here. And you can always add more things later if you realize you need to. Uh, let's check on this guy. We're up to three bars with four, three left. Let's leave uh, one. Uh, let's just leave one in there. So this way it pulls the primary things, this way it pulls the secondary things, um, then we'll flow them back together because they're being output to the same place. And that's chest 191. And this one's complaining because we didn't tell where in the chest to put it but we're going to blacklist that. The flow, we shouldn't have to say anything about it. And that should be everything we need. We just put that there. Then we need to check whether or not our redstone is the way we want it. But again, that'll just be a matter of the sign, knowing which way is primary and which way is secondary. I'm fairly certain that way is primary. See how we're doing. Okay, it looks like we're not gonna make it to four with that last burn, but this burn should take it over the top. Do we have anything to compress with us? I suppose we could compress some iron. Um, yeah, we might as well. Let's do just two pieces for now. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. So we toss it in the chest. It gets tossed into the machine 
and immediately spat back out. I can't even get to the window in time for it to be spat back out. But if you look, uh, I suppose since it's still being pressurized, you don't see that it didn't lose anything. We'll come back and show you that it doesn't lose anything later. Uh, but that is a lossless pressure chamber. The things go in, the things come out, there's no unsealing of the chamber, so no pressure is lost. When we chop this off, it'll still be a closed system because of this loop. That's why I put the loop in. So it'll be a closed pressure system that never loses any pressure. I'm not sure how I feel about how cheaty it is. Um, but if I could reasonably automate the other way, I would just do it the other way. In here, we've got a couple of things for some quests. We got uh, this second assembly IO unit. So I did complete that quest. Let's open up that book. What was that? Oh, he stepped on my pressure plate. I see. Creeping me out. Okay, so yes. We came in here and uh, we did this. We collected our rewards. Congratulations. You now should have everything you need to automate the making of printed circuit boards. From here, you can now make all of the technological goodies you need for long-term survival. However, these quests don't cover all that Pneumaticraft has to offer. There are several interesting and useful gadgets, like drones, that are outside the scope of this quest book. I suggest reading the Pneumaticraft wiki and or watching YouTube tutorials for more in-depth information on this mod. Um, yeah, I'm planning on doing some stuff with drones. They are super fun looking. I haven't done anything with them yet but I can think of some fun things to do with them. So next up, we got tools of the trade. Going for this charging station. Tools of the trade. Pneumaticraft has a lot of useful tools and gadgets. While these quests serve as a rough guide, I recommend checking out the Pneumaticraft wiki and perhaps YouTube spotlights for a better and more thorough understanding of this mod. A lot of Pneumaticraft gadgets require charging with compressed air before they can be used. Do realize the charging station balances air pressure between the item being charged and the rest of the system. If the tool has more bars of pressure than the rest of the air pressure network, it will actually discharge. And we'll need a charging station. Okay, this thing is done. We are over four bars, so now we could compress diamonds if we wanted. And then we go... Shabunk. And now our pressure is steady at 4.3 bars, 9 -0. Two, three, four. Uh, that took seven coal to get it there, and that's the last coal we'll need for this thing. Uh, for the charging station, we need this recipe right here. Here's hoping I'm more prepared for this episode than I was last episode. And then the tube. Charging station. Now this is for charging my tools. It's also for charging the drones. So that'll be fun. That's done. Next up, Pneumatic Wrench. Allows the rotation of placed pneumatic craft blocks, as well as a few other useful functions. Must be charged in a charging station. Okay. Kind of saw this one coming too. Because, well, it had the picture of it on the quest. Uh, so we put the air canister here, the lever here, and then the plastic all around. Pneumatic wrench. Wahahaha. <laughs> Are we done? Of course we're not done. GPS tool. Right click on a block to set the GPS tool to those coordinates. Right click in the air to modify set coordinates. Do not right click in the air before setting the GPS tool to any coordinates. The game will crash. The GPS tool is used to set a location for several other gadgets. Does not need charging. Okay, so how do we make that? GPS. Diamond! Well, I got one of those downstairs. Glass pane. Don't think I have any of those laying around, but I can make them. And redstone torch and some red plastic. Okay, let's go find those things. Yeah, we got enough space. Okay, so we definitely have diamonds in here. 
Papa. Oh, almost looked at you. Why are you still here? Probably swap out my juices while I'm down there. Uh, yeah, I'm still on a primarily juice-based diet. I can have occasional soups. Uh, but now that we have soybean seeds, we will upgrade to actual food shortly. Uh, let's see. Do I have any redstone in here? No. Redstone in there? No. Do I have any sticks on me? Yes. So we can make one when we get back. Uh, glass. Glass was over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Glass panes. Just need one, but we'll take all of them. And then red plastic. I did have some fun farming some fire seeds earlier. Um, if you haven't seen, they light things on fire that aren't netherrack. So when doing that work, if it falls on the dust, ah, I'm on fire. But it doesn't last long if you're not in it for long. Oof, out of water again already. Okay, so we needed six of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. We might need another one of these. Ah, we'll make that later. Just need one for the quest. We'll make a second one if we need one later. Okay, so we're back here. Grab a piece of redstone for the torch. Stick and red makes a torch. Oh, it's getting to be nighttime. Not a safe place up top when it's nighttime. Do, 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 do. Sorry about all the running back and forth, but it's probably not worth the cut because all we would save is a couple of seconds. Let's sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep. And we're back. Didn't swap out our juices. Oh well. And I'm falling. Uh, eventually I will clear this place out, build a nice house, have a nice staircase walking up there. But I'm having too much fun with the Nomadcraft stuff. Uh, not ready to make the house just yet. Once I've got this pretty well settled, then I might do some off-camera work and set up the house and all that jazz. And all that jazz. Okay. So we're here. Torch. Glass diamond and we come over here and go give me all the red plastic and there we go that's how fast it is that's insane I have too much red plastic I'll put it in the output chest yeah that that's too fast that that's kind of ridiculous how fast that was uh, okay so that's the GPS tool. Air cannon! The air cannon will fire an item to a specific set of coordinates. Placing a GPS tool with the proper location will lock the cannon on target. The GPS tool can then be removed. By default, a redstone signal from a lever, for instance, will cause the cannon to fire. It could be useful for long-range item transport or with the proper upgrade as a weapon. Awesome. Let's check that out. So yeah, you can make a TNT cannon out of this, but it only fires at one place. So if you can lure whatever it is you want destroyed to that one place, then you're good to go. Okay, so tube and stone. Oh yeah, that's gonna take more than I can just whip up in a couple of seconds. Um, so we're unlikely to be finishing that today. Yeah, and I already spent quite a bit of time building and explaining that thing. The upgrades, the machine upgrade, I the speed upgrade, I told you we're going to need um, the brewing to be able to do. Um, life upgrade takes a clock and some apples and stuff. That'll be fine. The security upgrade, I don't know. Let's check that one out. 
Securitai. Here we are. That, Obsidian, and Lapis. Now you might be thinking, oh, you don't have a good enough pick. Well, Obsidian, you don't necessarily have to mine. If you take the stone bucket that I made the netherrack in, put in some lava, and then put some water into it, boom, you got yourself Obsidian. It's kind of wasteful of water, but yeah, it's not too bad. We're fairly comfortable in our water situation. Um, now, I kind of want to set up my automation station. So what we're going to do is put this right about here. Some tubes to our charging station. We're going to have to make this safer later. But for now, we'll make it just nice and dangerous so we can see generally how it works. So we're going to put the controller here. We'll have a chest here. Our IO units here and here to grab from the chest and put in the chest. Then the assembly platform in clear view and the layer here. So now everybody can reach everything. We go in here and we would give it the program. And now it should know how to do its job. Now, we don't have the export unit for IO because, well, we don't have our thingamajig charged up. We can fix that though. We just take this and go boonk, theoretically. Hmm, maybe we need some oomph in the system first. A little bit of oomph. Oh, right, we have to go into it and then go full power. And it starts charging up. Good enough. We don't need much. All we have to do is go and now it's a thing. Insufficient pressure. Not all machines required for this program are available. Import, export, platform, controller, and laser. Why do you want the drill? You don't need the drill. IO, control, laser, and platform. IO, platform, controller, and laser. So for some reason it wants the drill, even though the program doesn't say it needs one. So we'll see what happens when the pressure gets to the right pressure. I just wanted to show you what this is, how it generally works. I'll eventually add a pressure thing here and then something to turn it off when it is sufficiently pressured. But I don't know why it's being a jerk about that. Let's go get some uh, green plastic. We'll see if it just wants something to do. Otherwise, I'm going to have to read up on why it thinks it needs a light, a uh, drill, and then come back to it next time. Uh, also, between now and then, I will likely move this over there, like I keep saying I will. But I'll actually do it. Or maybe I won't. We'll see. <laughs> Do we need some sustenance? 
That's weird. Grab some green plastic. We've got some compressed iron already over there. Now, this is currently in primary mode. So if we go like this, it'll just spit them back out over here. So what we need to do is switch it to secondary mode and then chuck in the plastic and the compressed iron. Et voila! Empty PCBs in a flash. Then we can take these, cart them over here, which I suppose we could automate to some degree. And now this needs more oomph. Good thing we keep our oomph in a chest. Give me your oomph. Now, this should only require one more coal to get to where it needs to be. Do it! Now, it might be possible that the laser program can do other things that require the drill. Oh, look, look at it go. Reaching into the chest. It took it. And it picks it up ever so slowly. Spins all the way around. You can do it, pokey little puppy. And puts it on the table. And then we bring in the laser. Is there gonna be an actual little laser? Come on, actual little laser. Awesome. And it does a little swirly motion. Oh, and it's done already. Magic of lasers. Science! And oddly enough, it's the input and the output that slow it down. Weird. And now it's probably using some of the pressure to make this happen, I would expect. Um, let's take a look. Yeah. There it goes, pulling the thing from the box uses up a bit of the pressure. Quite a bit of the pressure. Well, quite a bit of the air. Not necessarily the pressure. Because we're still at 4.3 bars, it's not moving too hard. But yeah, anytime one of these things moves, it uses up some of the pressure. So I will need to keep this thing fueled. I'll definitely need some safety measures, because that is not a lot of wiggle room for this thing working. But we've got ourselves an unassembled PCB. If we did all the magic over here to make the transistors and the capacitors, uh, we'd be all set. So this is a functional thing. It does what it's supposed to. This is a hyper-functional thing. It's kind of cheaty. Uh, might keep it, might not. And this chest is now empty. We have done what we came to do. We'll do this sometime in the future. We will definitely make the air cannon for next time. Then this will likely be either generating power from pressure or generating pressure from power. We'll see which it is. Go inside where it's safe before a spider shows up. Then we can head back over here. I'll have the smeltery up and running for next time so we can make the machine frame. And under basic survival, 
we'll be able to make a glacial precipitator. So that'll be fantastic. We'll get that all up and running. And I'll see you in the next episode of Crash Landing with Light.